say in the second chapter, uh, it says here, the word of Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it came to pass in the last days that the mountains of the Lord's house. Now, a mountain in the scripture represents a kingdom or a nation. It came to pass in the last days that the mountain and the kingdom of the Lord's house shall be established on top of the mountain, exalted above the kingdom and nations of the earth, and shall be exalted above the hills, above the small kingdoms and the nations, and all the people of the earth and the nations of the earth shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come, let us uh, let us go up to the mount, to the kingdom, to the throne of God, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us uh, of his ways, and he will uh, will uh, walk in the in in the path of. Uh, for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word word of the Lord from Jerusalem. There in verse five it says, "O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord." You know, life. This is about the fourth. I believe the fourth sermon I've delivered concerning Isaiah. Now, and what I talked about before was the background. Without any understanding of the background, we cannot enter into the depth of the Word of God. We've got to know the background of the Scripture, what it's doing, what it's saying. And so, uh, I, I have a habit, I, I, I read every different types of Bibles. I just don't want to read one type of Bible. Don't, I don't read just the King James Version. I read uh, the um, American Standard Revised Version, supposed to be about the best. It's been translated directly from, old, from, the, uh, from the Old Greek language. And so that's the reason. But... Uh, I've been giving you the background of what uh, the meaning of and when uh, Isaiah started. Now, in verse 1, it says of chapter 1, and the vision of Isaiah we, he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uriah, Joab, Ahaz, Hezekiah, king of Judah. Now, Isaiah grew up as a young as a youth under Uriah, a good king, an able administrator, a man uh, wonderful, consecrated, and he was also a genius. Uh, under him, the borders of the land were extended. He won back uh, on the uh, port at the Red Sea, built up the navy, uh, carried uh, carried on uh, merchandise commerce to, in the with the, within the far east. His uh, policies was blessed by God, and he walked in humility before Jehovah the Lord. He rise followed by a worthy son named Jotham. Jotham inherited the ability to follow the national policy of his father. Uh, he and uh, the people lived in prosperity, in peace, in the land of the Lord with them. It was in those days that Isaiah lived as a young man, and it was in those days that he was called to the message of the Lord. So when Isaiah uh, was. Uh, sent the message, everything was going fine. Every, uh, they were very prosperous during the land. But Jotham, in, in one of the strange providence of life, Jotham was followed by a son, his son, whose name, uh, he was unworthy, unfit, and he was ungodly, Ahaz. As a young man, he came from to the throne from a harem. Uh, he was a, a spoiled ch 
child, but he was a spoiled brat. That's all you can say about it. He, uh, he governed with the ignorance and superstition of an untaught woman of the herd. And so, the, the country under him decayed. As Isaiah described it, as for my people, children are uh, of her oppressed, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, the, they which lead this cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy pain. 312. The uh, glorious, magnificent kingdom of Judah that Isaiah knew under uh, Urias and Joab, Joab failed into dis, it disintegrating. It, 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 it was completely destroyed. And the prophet said, For Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is fallen. Their, uh, their, their tongue and their doing are against the Lord to provoke, provoke the eyes of his glory. How tragic. It's overwhelming. Here is a holy city, a sacred nation brought to untold shame and sorrow uh, by, the, by this man. Of all the things Isaiah loved, he loved the nation Israel. And he was, he was a very strong patriot. Jerusalem was the place for Isaiah. And to see the city and the nation fall into disrepair, into devastation and destruction, brought grief unspeakable to his heart. Now, he says, thus do they say, thus do they provoke the eyes of the glory of the Lord in 3a. Now that's a strange, very strange phrase to provoke the eyes of the glory of the Lord. You see, the text or the vision that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem there, that word saw is used. And to us, it's just the past tense of see. You see something or you saw it. Uh, but the word has a different meaning. Isaiah uses it, the word saw as to split, cleave, to see through and beyond. And this is the vision, the vision that came to the prophet that he beheld how the weak and wicked king Ahaz, Ahaz was. And, uh, and Isaiah stood before Ahaz knowing that the Ahaz at that time had um, sought a truce or a, 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 with the Syrian, uh, the, the king of Syria, and he was a cruel, merciful king of Syria. Uh, and no less, five times was the ruthlessness of his soldiers. They were awful. The day of the prophet was, was lived in dread of the awesome, monstrous, ravaging power of the Assyrian army. Now there he stood before Ahaz, Ahaz who secretly had a covenant with the Syrians and invited them to come down to Jerusalem. And, and Isaiah pleaded with the king, saying, Trust the Lord, look to God in return and the rest, and in rest and quietness and confidence of his own self, uh, he seen, uh, Isaiah seen what he had done. He had made a covenant. Thus the Lord... Uh, Asked, he said, the Lord said, give me a, I'll give you a sign, any kind of sign. But uh, no, a virgin shall be with child and bring forth a son, and his name shall be called 
with us. God with us. And his day the people will dwell in safety and Jerusalem will be exalted and God will be king over the earth. That is what Isaiah, Isaiah saw. Now, in the text, the same thing here. We see <laughs> the devastation with the, with the enemies ravaged the people of the kingdom of God. The, and uh, Isaiah saw the vision of the Lord God in the last day. And when Christ of the king of glory shall come down and dwell among the people. The mountains of the house of the Lord shall be exalted above the kingdom and the earth. All the nations shall, and mankind shall flow into it. And when out of Zion shall go forth the, the law, wisdom, righteousness, and justice. And when peace shall acknowledge, the Lord shall cover the truth. Uh, it, the whole earth will be covered with the knowledge of God. That is a vision that Isaiah saw in the last day. Looking over beyond this destruction of the nation and the kingdom, he seen the glory and righteousness that God brought down. Now, in a way, you look at Judah and Jerusalem, and you have to say the same thing takes place is taking place in America. You know, years ago, years ago, they used to have, they called them yellow backs, a dollar. A yellow back was worth its amount in gold. You ask somebody today about something like that, and they don't know what you're even talking about. Then you had a, like it's referred to as a silver certificate. They was greenbacks. And it was worth that in silver. Now, get whatever dollar you want to get out of your wallet now and hold it up, and it's worthless. I mean, it is completely worthless. You know, um, you know, a billion. You talk about a billion dollars, and a, uh, or a million dollars. Let me. You take a stack of crisp one hundred dollar bills. Stack them up, six inches high, mash them down. That is a million dollars. You know how much a, a, a billion dollars is? Stack it up in crisp bills. Stack it up and you go about 170 some feet above the Washington Monument. That's what a billion is. And they want to give away more billions and billions of dollars. Over and over again, uh, I've seen a little bitty story about a, a, a cartoon. It said this guy, uh, uh, this messenger comes to the king and said, we can't print no more paper money. He said, why? And he just passed out when he come to. He said, we ain't got no more. He said, why do we stop printing money? Don't. And he said, we don't have no more gold to back it up with. He said, I thought you was going to come and say we had run out of paper. That's what they do now. They just print billions and billions of dollars on paper that is worthless. It's worth nothing. Just print it. They say, print it, print it, print it. That's all they want to do. And so, you listen to the there's no institution under God's heaven that can live without physical responsibility. It just can't do it. You just can't keep a printing money. I mean, and now they talk about trillions of dollars. We're about 20 some trillion dollars in debt. Now I showed you, tried to show you what a million the difference between a million and a billion was. Think of a trillion dollars. And you just can't do it. Uh, and look, another thing. Look at the fear. You cannot. I can remember you could walk up and down the streets. And you're afraid to walk up and down the streets today. 
You're afraid to walk up and down the streets here. You have people, the lawlessness that's going on in our country. Uh, I seen the other day, it showed uh, the new, on the news, this one store was being robbed. Robbed for five hours, they carried stuff out. And the police was one block away, and they wouldn't even come. Police officers uh, getting beat up right on the street. I mean, what kind of place? By God's grace, we're not going to, we're going to, when we come to a point and say, that is enough, then uh, we'll, we'll say that is enough. Look at our schools. Uh, uh, we never did hear nothing like that. Nobody never did come to school with guns. I mean, like that. We had gun racks in the back of our vehicle. We went to school. We had them usually had a 30 30 stuck up in the window. Now, if you've got one, they'll pull you over. But see, you go to your streets in New York. I dare not to go to New York again. I wasn't even thinking about walking the streets again. I remember the they said they had these parks in New York City. They said, you can go now because they had a new mayor. Said he straightened all that up. Now you dare not to go to a park. Go anywhere. Uh, and uh, there was somebody said that uh, they had moved to New York and said that, uh, said his son went to school. They stopped him on the road and beat him up and took what he had. And he called the police and the police said, hey, you got any mug money? He said, mug money? What are you talking about? And he said, you always keep a few hundred dollars in your pocket in case somebody comes up to rob you. You have something to give them get, to keep from getting beat up so bad. Now they'll beat you up and kill you, whether you want it or not. I said, i never forget stopping to a little film station and he said, if they ever try to try it on me, he pulled out from under the under the counter of a big old pistol. He was about that long. <laughs> he said, I've got it. I'll go down before I let them take what I got. But they, they'll kill you. And we see this over and over again. Now, there's a Supreme Court. We cannot define, they can't define what a woman is. I mean, we cannot even define what a woman is. And you see that going on. This all reminds me of what Paul said in, in, the, in the second chapter of Thessalonians. Thessalonian. He wrote a letter, he said, he said, because they received not the love of the truth, for this cause God sent them a strong delusion and that they should believe a lie and be damned. You see people delusional and you wonder how they got it? Right there's the reason they got it. God sent them a delusion spirit. They acted foolish. Just say that. You know, I, I'm going to say this before we go. When they choose, remember this, my hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' is blood and righteous. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly believe upon his name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. You know, if you want a foundation upon to build your home, build it on Christ. If you want a foundation to build your life, do it on Christ. If you, if you, uh, if you, if you are in despair or weakness, believe on Christ. He is, he, Isaiah saw the glory of the Lord and his kingdom of Christ, our Savior, coming. I think that's should be good enough. Our hope should be on nothing but Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Let's stand. Sing one verse and one song.